isn't this a magical place, by the way? I just think it's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful place. And uh, I got to mention, uh, you've got the current director, and some of you met one of this morning, but there's Jim here, who was the director from 1974, and put the place together. I want him to stand up for a moment. I want you all to put your hands together. And I think, uh, I think really, I always believe, it's all right talking about the things facing us. I, I do honestly believe you have to look back to, you know? There are plenty of people have said, if you don't know where you've been, you don't know where you're going. And uh, I've had a great a revivalist uh, summer in many ways. Has anybody been to the Durham Miners Garden? It's the second Saturday in July every year. It is fantastic. Uh, trade union banners, of course there's no pits. And you think, well how can there be a Durham Miners Gala if there are no, no pits there? It's because they've decided that it is what happened before 84, 85 is worth remembering. All those lives lost digging the coal. All those lives blighted by poverty pay and by ill health. These are things that we ought to remember. And the Durham Miners Gala, a great, great occasion. Colourful, brass bands everywhere. And it is revivalist. It does lift your spirits. And on from there to another Saturday. You must think, what does he do all summer? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, this is what I do. Uh, I don't talk anymore. I listen mainly. Down to Tollpuddle. 1834. I was just a little lad there. 1834. About the same time, in fact, that some of the stuff was happening here, uh, uh, as I understand it. I think that, uh, didn't he leave about, when did, uh, when did he leave and go to America? When did... Uh, well, he, he had left New York by that time, but yes, he, he founded the Grand National Consolidated Trade Union Correct. in 1834 and went on to another career in... in but the point is that uh, Robert Owen, and the, who was here, of course, for 25 years, he uh, and his ideas pushed for the release of the Tolpuddle Martyrs, these six people arrested for being in a, 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 a prototype trade union, sent off to Australia for seven years. Um, fascinating, by the way, if you've not been to Tolpuddle, go. It's a one great, great festival. It's a, it's a phenomenal weekend. And again, it lifts your spirits. And I think being here, certainly for me, has looking back and listening and uh, seeing what all the people who've worked here over these last 20, 30 years have actually done about this place, because I'm sick and tired of the histories of kings and queens and dukes and duchesses, but nothing about us and our people. And we ought to be proud of our history. We ought to have these annual events. And can I say, I know you don't like anybody saying anything nice about you, and I also happen to know that it's not very frequent, but... Uh, <laughs> But I think you and the team need a round of applause for this is the second occasion. I have to tell you, I thought there'd be more people, yeah? Now that's probably because you put me on the agenda. If you hadn't actually <laughs> mentioned me, it might have been bigger. In fact, there is a story of the General Secretary who turned up in Scotland, got to the meeting hall like this, there was nobody. Nobody at all. And he said to the Scottish National Officer, did you tell him I was coming? And he said, Matt Smith said, no, but I'll find out who did. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, the, 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 the fact is that this is a great occasion, and I think it, things take off slowly, uh, Stephen, but I would keep it going. I would widen it to other branches, widen it to other parts of Britain. Why not advertise in the northeast? Why not advertise in Yorkshire and the northwest? And say, come to this occasion. And I think that over the course of 10, 15 years or whatever, this will be a great, a grand Scottish occasion for working class people. So, well done, well done, well done. Um, we didn't start the fire that's ended up with this massive deficit for which our people are going to be paying. I mean, that is the truth of it, isn't it? Our people are going to be paying. The people who aren't here and who are perhaps thinking, well, it hasn't hit me yet, it's going to be some time before it happens. This was started 
by effectively people who don't care for us anyway. Not just bankers, all sorts of corporate entities across the globe. They started the economic situation. How people got every day, certainly in uh, unison, went off, did their work, caring, sharing, looking after people. But these are the people who are going to have to pay with their jobs. And I, I'm reminded when that idiot Osborne said uh, something, like, he's another one, isn't he? Eh? <laughs> what? One of the great minds of our century. Uh, Osborne was the one who said, I think, first, we're all in this together. You know, he probably thought he was being Chichillian or something. <laughs> we're all in this together. And I remember in the 30s there was a big poster, those of you who are into history will remember it. And it showed you a stepladder coming out of a, a, ri a river. And uh, there was a, a worker stood on a, a run of the ladder with his head just above the water. And about eight steps up the ladder, there was a great fat capitalist with a cigar and a top hat. And he's saying, fairness for all, everybody one step down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, that's exactly when I heard them say, we're all in this together. Because there are 17 millionaires in the cabinet. Probably 18 by tomorrow morning. 17 millionaires in the cabinet. They don't know or think about the things that our people know and think about. They really don't. And somehow, we've got to challenge what they're doing. The Lib Dems as well. The Lib Dems and the Tories together. And I thought you were Tory free in Scotland. There's one seat, isn't there? Can I bring you, therefore, the, uh, from the Socialist Republic of South Georgia, totally Tory MP free. My best regards to you. Uh, and I hope you get that one. Of course, we've got one Liberal Democrat. Somebody called, what's his name, Pat? Clegg. That's I knew it. <laughs> There's something in my brain that stops me saying the name. What are they about doing? They are about rolling back everything that our people have built together over this last 60 years. I think it is phenomenally severe. And I like being optimistic. I don't like coming and saying, you're really in for a hiding. And I had a discussion with Bob and two or three other people this morning who said, well, actually... The cuts aren't going to hit us for quite some time yet. And I, I think you're lucky in that sense. Not lucky because it won't hurt when it happens. But you've got time to prepare our members and members of other trade unions about what the situation is going to be. There are 61 million people in the UK, give or take. There are 30 million of that 61 million who are in the labour force, in the workforce, available for work. We have less than 6.8 million in trade unions of any description. Less than 6.8 million out of the 61 million. Less than 6.8 million out of the 30 million in the workforce. So we've got huge um, tasks over the days, weeks, months ahead. And we are 1.4 million on early uh, Stephen Wamper. And we are the biggest, probably, in, in Great Britain. But it doesn't mean to say that the workforce are organised. Thatcher's children, in fact, Thatcher's children are about, well, we don't really want trade unions. Trade unions are just about strikes. Trade unions are about themselves. Not trade unions are about international solidarity. Not about trade unions are for public services for everybody. Somehow we failed to get over the message, even about ourselves and our jobs. And I put that, I'm, I'm part of that as well. What's going to happen? Well, pensions. Anybody on pension already other than me? Well, uh, you look as though you should be. Isn't it? Um, uh, uh, perhaps you had a bad night. Um, Pensions. I think pay, pensions, privatisation and pushes against trade unions. Easy way to remember it. Pay, pensions, privatisation, pushes against tra trade unions. On pay, I understand yesterday something happened in Scotland in local government, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't somebody do a backflip after doing negotiations? Did they not just suddenly come out and say, we're imposing something less than 1% and then a pay freeze for two years? 
That will have major knock-on effects if nothing is done about it, if it isn't challenged, if people don't understand what that means. Because VAT will go up for you as well as anybody else, won't it? Inflation is already on the way up. And of course, it's, uh, you only need basic economics to know that if pay doesn't go up, not only can you not buy what you'd wanted to buy as against inflation, but it means you, you haven't got what they, you, they, they call the multiplier effect. So in this local economy here, let's say the staff employed here, Lorna, aren't given a pay increase, that they can't spend that in the local community, then, well, you know, you know, it's fairly simple. You don't have to be the chance of the exchequer to understand the knock-on effect. And that is the big problem about this deficit that everybody's panicking about. Now, if I, I tell you, if I had that deficit, I'd be worried. It is a lot of billions of pounds. But this is an entire country. It's an entire nation. It's an entire 61 million people. And I don't think that that's as important as people. I don't think that deficit is important as people's lives and people's futures. And if in 1945 to 51, when we had that Labour government after the war, glad that spider's going. The, uh, you can't get on the web here anyway. The, uh, so, Jean, I'll explain. There's a spider. No, no, no. Uh, 